In Power Query, we're all familiar with operators like the greater than, less than, equal to, or not equal to operators. But how familiar are you with Power Query's coalesce operator? If you've never used the coalesce operator, coalesce is used when working with data containing nulls. It will return the first operand if it is not a null, otherwise it will return the second operand. And you're not limited to two operands as we'll see in our examples. The coalesce operator is represented by two question marks. Coalesce is especially useful when dealing with data that contains nulls because you can use it in certain situations instead of something like an if-then-else statement or a try-otherwise statement. Coalesce is going to greatly simplify these types of formulas. Let's look at some problem scenarios and then see how Coalesce can be used to solve these problems. This file is available for download, link in the video description, so that way you can follow along and use it as a reference after the video when you want to go back and refresh your memory. As stated, Coalesce is useful when working with data that has nulls. Take for example this file of our sales reps who have international sales and domestic sales. And all we want to do is take this into Power Query and add these two columns together. If we use a simple addition formula to create this column, Power Query will not recognize the nulls. And any row that has a null, the addition will not be performed. Here's another example with some discounts. We've got a sale and a discount amount. I want to subtract the discount from the sales. But in Power Query, if there's a null in that discount amount, the subtraction won't take place and we won't carry over the sales into the adjusted sales column. Here we have a timesheet where some people failed to clock out. And our policy is if you don't physically clock out, you only get paid up to the halfway point of the day. Well, because there are nulls, we won't calculate any time worked. Here I've got a couple races. Some people participated in the first race, some people participated in the second race, and I want to concatenate those two columns together. If there are nulls, I'll have to use some sort of if-then-else statement, that if they ran race one, bring race one's time over, if they ran race two, bring race two's time over. Same thing for these quarterly sales. Maybe I would like to create a column that only shows the last quarter's sales. In Power Query, this is going to require a very lengthy nested if statement to check for quarter one, then quarter two, then quarter three, then quarter four. We'll be able to make this nested if much shorter using Coalesce. So let's see how to solve all these problems. So let's start with an example of missing data or completely missing entries. We've got international sales, domestic sales. We just want to add these two things together. So let's bring this into Power Query. So let's take the international sales, select the domestic sales, and we'll do something as simple as add column, standard, add. As you can see, anywhere where there's a null, that entire entry will not be carried over. And in the case of Jack Potts, he had no sales at all. But we'd like these nulls to show zeros. So what we'll do is we'll go up into the M code, and we'll take the field designation for international sales, and we'll put it inside a set of parentheses. But in those parentheses, we'll put question mark, question mark, zero. So what this is saying is, if international sales is null, put a zero. It's kind of like an if-then statement. If I hit check, now you can see anywhere where international sales was a null, the domestic sales is carried over. But what if domestic sales is a null? Well, then we want to carry over international. So we'll do the same thing with domestic sales. We'll wrap it inside a set of parentheses, but then we'll tell it if domestic sales coalesce, in other words, if domestic sales is a null, put a zero there. Check mark. And as you can see, anywhere there's a null, the numbers for international sales will carry over or domestic sales will carry over. And in the case where there are no sales at all, then we just have a zero. So here's the data we started with, and now here's the sales rolled up into a total sales column. Now here's a similar scenario. We have our sales, and then we have a column of discounted amounts. We need to determine the adjusted amount by deducting the discount amount from the sales. But what about those sales reps who don't have discount amounts? Well, let's bring it into Power Query and see how it handles it. So in Power Query, we'll take the sales, hold down Control, select the discount amount, and then go up to Add Column, Standard, Subtract. As you can see, anywhere where there was not a discount amount, the sale does not carry over. So what we'll do is we'll go into the M code and around the discount amount field, we'll put a set of parentheses, and then we'll tell it if there's a null, then replace it with a zero. We'll hit check, and now any lacking discount amount, the sales is carried over. Here we have the original data, and here's Power Query's adjusted sales. Now this example is going to be a little more challenging. We've got the employees and the time they clocked in, and of course we hope to have the time that they clocked out, but sometimes people get in a hurry and they forget to clock out. But the company policy is, if you don't clock out, you only get paid up to a half a day, or noon, 12 p.m. We could write an if statement to check the state of the clock out, and if it's missing, replace it with noon, but let's see how we can do this with Coalesce. We'll begin by getting the difference between the clock out time and the clock in time. 
So we'll choose the clock out column, hold down control, select clock in. We'll go up to add column, then time, subtract. And I'll rename this to time difference. Now the trick is to check the clock out field for nulls. So like before, we'll take the clock out field, we'll wrap it in this set of double quotes, and then we'll tell it if the clock out field is null, in other words, coalesce, then they get paid for a half a day's worth of work, which in terms of time, a half a day is 0.5. Now, if this is where we leave it, we're going to get errors because you can't take a number and subtract it from a field that's been data typed as time. So we have to essentially convert the 0.5 into a time. So we'll take the 0.5 and wrap it inside of a time.from function. Now we'll hit check. So if you didn't clock out, you only get paid up till 12 p.m. Now I need to convert this time difference into minutes worked. So we'll take time difference and go up to duration and change that to total minutes. I'll rename that to minutes worked and then we can get rid of the original time difference column. So again, looking back at that formula, we'll take the clock out and if it's a null, take a half a day and then subtract the clock in time. So here's our original timesheet information and now here's Power Query's calculated minutes worked. Let's take a look at how we could use coalesce to replace lengthy if then else statements. So here we have a list of racers. Some of these people participated in race one, some participated in race two. And all we want to do is combine these two columns together into a single column of times. Let's go into Power Query. We'll go up to add column and create a conditional column. And we'll call this new column if then else. So if race two equals a null, then we'll take race one. Otherwise, we'll take race two. Hit OK. And now we've got the times combined into a single column. But let's see if we can take this if then else and make it simpler. And here's where I think coalesce really shines. We're going to go create a custom column and we'll name this column coalesce. With coalesce, it's as simple as this. We'll take race one and if it's a null, give me race two. That's it. Hit OK. It's the same information. So going back to the previous step, this whole if statement right here is reduced to this simple coalesce statement. If race one is empty, give me the second race. Send it back to Excel. So here's the original data with races in two columns. And here's Power Query's output combining those columns either through an if then else statement or a coalesce statement. They both give you the same results, but you just pick whichever one your brain likes better. And for our final example, we have four quarters worth of sales, but not everybody worked throughout the entire year. So we only want the sales from the last worked quarter. Let's take this into Power Query. We'll go up to Add Column, Conditional Column, and we'll call this column If Then Else. We'll say if the fourth quarter does not equal null, then give me the fourth quarter. Then we'll add a clause and check to see if the third quarter does not equal a null. If so, give me the third quarter. We'll add a third clause to check to see if the second quarter does not equal a null. And if it doesn't, give me the second quarter. And at this point, we could just go ahead and say, give me the first quarter. But if the first quarter is null, we better have a test for that. So we'll add a clause and check to see if the first quarter does not equal null. And if it doesn't, then give me the first quarter. Now, if we've made it this far, we'll just enter a value of zero. So that way, if they had no sales throughout the year, we at least get a zero. Hit OK. Now, if you take a look at this if statement, it's quite substantial. Let's see how we could do the same thing with coalesce, but much more efficiently. So we'll go up to custom column. We'll call this column coalesce. And the formula for this will be check quarter four. If it's a null, check quarter three. If that's a null, check quarter two. And if that's a null, check quarter one. And if that's a null, give me a zero. The results here are identical, but look how much simpler this is especially when you go back and you compare it to something like this. Sending our results back to Excel, here's where we started and here's where we ended up. Again, same information in both of these columns. It's just whichever you prefer. I prefer the coalesce. But I could see where if you were building something for somebody else, the if then else might be more understandable if they went back and looked at your process. Whereas the coalesce, they might have no idea what you're doing. So there's a few examples of the coalesce operator. Remember, it can be used to replace more lengthy if-then-else statements if all you're checking for is nulls. Also, when you might be checking for nulls when working with a try otherwise. So have you heard of coalesce before? If you haven't, let me know if you think you might be able to use it. And if you have used it, tell me down in the comments some of the scenarios you've used it in. You could download this file to check out all of the data and the M code formulas that I created, so that way you can reverse engineer it for your specific needs. 
Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your time. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.